Good afternoon. Welcome to the Mythical Ireland Library. I'm Anthony Murphy of mythicalireland.com. I hope that uh, I haven't interrupted your day uh, too badly, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or on the Mythical Ireland Facebook page or indeed on the Mythical Ireland community. You're all very welcome today. Uh, so there are two reasons for the live stream. Uh, the, the the main reason should be self-evident at this stage. <laughs> it's in the title of the video. I can't contain my excitement. But the other reason is that I want to wish you all a happy Saint Sheila's Day. And uh, it's it's a it's a, an interesting coincidence actually that uh, what has happened today should have happened today. But uh, just in case. Well, I keep I keep spelling it wrong, but anyway, never mind. Saint Sheila, S H E E L A H. Um, so uh, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about in relation to Saint Sheila, uh, I'm just entering it in there as a message. Um, sorry, as a comment, should I say? Um, Saint Sheila was Patrick Saint Patrick's wife, and her. Pardon me while I just mute this. She. Um, her uh, celebration, as it were, was March the 18th, the day after St. Patrick's Day. That was all pre-famine. Unfortunately, uh, the um, the folklore around St. Sheila died out uh, at the time of the Great Famine. It was prevalent beforehand, but it seems to have emigrated. It's a strange one because, um, you know, St. Patrick's Day is so huge, and yet... Hardly anybody knew until a, f a few years ago um, when um, Shane Lahan, a folklorist from University College Cork, unearthed information about St. Sheila. St. Patrick apparently was married, uh, according to folklore. Of course, St. Sheila is not recognised by the Catholic Church, just in case anybody points that out to me. She ain't recognised. Of course she's not. But uh, let's not go there, because let's not uh, mar what is otherwise going to be a nice, uh, I hope, announcement and occasion. Um, I'm fascinated, as I say, that it just so happens that uh, early this morning, uh, well, early, uh, around nine o'clock, I received a call from an unknown number, answered the call, and he said he was a gentleman from Anglo Printers. And uh, I said, how are you? And he said, great. He said, this book is ready to be delivered. Where would you like us to deliver it to? And I said, well, my home, if you don't mind. He said, right, we'll have it to you first thing in the morning, as in tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. He said, brilliant, sound, class. I said, look, I'm just asking, right? I live in Drogheda, so the print plant is only a mile away from me, uh, as the crow flies. I said, is there any chance I could I could get get one, you know, as in one book? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. He says, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave a box for you here in the factory and we'll deliver the rest tomorrow morning. So I couldn't wait for lunchtime. Scooted on down. By the way, this won't be a long live stream because I am on break from lunch and uh, I have to get back to work. So I scooted on down to the to, to the printer and uh, collected a box of Return to Segish, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Notice the way I'm keeping you dangling. Um, So I want to say that... Uh, if you're a patron, you'll know all this already because the uh, patrons uh, saw a couple of pictures, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, and there will be a patron-only video uh, later today uh, that I made when I was collecting it to show you the excitement and the first opening of the box and the first look at the books. So I'll share that with the patrons over on patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland later on. In the meantime, I suppose I should show you, you know, um, uh, but... Just before I do, I have to say, and I really have to say it, and I said, what, I've, I said it in the video, and uh, you, the patrons will see that later on. You know, when you invest so much of your time and your energy and your heart and your soul into a project, when you finally send the files to the printer and when they send you back a proof and you approve that and they say it's printing, at that point, you know it's completely out of your hands now. It's like, I've done all I think I can do with it. Um, you know, you hope and pray that it's going to be, uh, that it's going to look the way you want it to look. And you can only imagine that 
I mean, you see it on the screen and you know what the typography is like. I knew what the dust jacket looked like on the screen. I knew potentially what the hardback cover was going to look like. But I could only imagine that bit because I hadn't no, I had no way of seeing it, as it were, seeing it because they were debossing this image in gold foil onto the cover. And so there's that tense excitement. It's like an anxiety and a, oh, no, what if I open this box of books and, you know, uh, I'm not happy with it in some way, you know? I needn't have worried for a moment. It exceeds my expectations and my wishes for it. And in fact, uh, there was one or two comments from family members in the past hour to say that it actually looks better than anything you've produced before, book-wise. And I'd be fairly happy with, for instance, the cover of Island at the Setting Sun, I think is fantastic. I really like the cover of my Mythical Ireland book, for instance, you know. Um, the Cry of the Sebek was nice. I mean, they're all pretty good, you know. Anyway, better show you, better show you. Who's in the house? Sorry. Guido. Hello, Guido. Good to see you. Mandy McCurl is here. She is excited and delighted. <laughs> you can imagine how I feel. Erica Rivertree. Hello, Erica. Happy Sheila's Day. Many happy returns. John Main says, oh, yes, hurry up. Okay, I can do the greetings afterwards. I'll just show you a book. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me the greatest honor and pleasure to reveal to you Nah, I won't. I'll read out some more comments. Uh, who else is there? No, I'm only joking. Return to Sagish. The book has arrived from the printer. And you know what? I was, I, I didn't actually, wasn't 100% sure, you know, about the cover as to whether it was going to be a glossy cover or a matte cover, you know? And it's really shiny, and it's really nice. It's shiny in a really nice way. There she is. All that's on the back is the barcode. I kept it simple. So this design here, the uh, the salmon in gold, sorry, the salmon in gold jumping out of the waters of Segish to eat one of the, the uh, I should put that in the middle so it focuses, to eat one of the hazelnuts, one of the canoe that's falling from one of the hazel trees. And the and the gold frame around it. Uh, sorry, I should I should look at the book when I'm doing this. When you're looking at the the other image, it's hard to see. And so I kept it as simple as possible. That uh, design was done by artist Sean Fitzgerald, and I was very grateful to have Sean's help on this. That's something I could never have done myself. And ah, uh, sure, look, there's the inside flap with uh, a, li a little summary of what the book is about. And even that's difficult to do to summarize what the book's actually about. And the back flap is a tiny little bit of bio, uh, a paragraph of biographical material about me and uh, my previous titles. Time for the big reveal, because uh, as, as much as that is beautiful and uh, totally different to anything that I've done in color scheme, the closest thing that comes to it is Mythical Ireland, which is kind of a bluish color. It's really very different to anything I've done. Anyway, I'm going to take off the dust jacket and let you see the case. They call this in in print. Uh, the back is blank. In in printing in printing terminology, this is the case. Look at that! Isn't that a beauty, huh? And uh, I hope that the camera f focuses on this but it's actually debossed, you know, it's imprinted, pressed down into the Wibbelin material and uh, uh, and then finished with this with this beautiful gold foil. I, I just think I just think it's beautiful. It has surpassed my expectations, actually, and even uh, in gold along the edge. Uh, and again, I think that that looks to be debossed as well. Uh, the title of the book, Return to Segish. Um, sorry about the uh, lack of focus there by the camera. There you go. So um, really chuffed. On top of all that, um, this is my first book in hardback. Book number seven, the first hardback book, the first one with the dust jacket, and also uh, the first one to be printed on creamy paper rather than white paper. I've had, uh, I've had white paper. I've had... Uh, coated and non-coated papers in my books 
but this is the first time I have non-coated creamy paper. Creamy Bookwove is the name of the paper. And uh, I, I just love the look and feel of it. I think it just is perfect. And uh, there's a little, so we incorporated Sean's uh, salmon design at the bottom of every page. I hope that focuses. So at the, at the bottom of every page, we have the salmon leaping out of the water. So there you go. Um, as I say, uh, the expectations are, haven't just been met. They've been exceeded. I'm absolutely enthralled, thrilled, delighted, chuffed. Um, couldn't be happier. Uh, it's, as I say, different in so many beautiful ways, uh, this book, um, which uh, uh, flowed from a pen onto the creamy pages of a notebook. I hand wrote it initially uh, before typesetting it. Um, and it's actually even, as I say, difficult for me to summarize exactly what it's about. I'll read the, uh, I'll read the blurb on the, on the uh, flap. A few comments first. Uh, yes. A, a, a lot of people saying thank you and congratulations. Um, beautiful cover. Uh, Stacy, thank you. Beautiful color, says, uh, is that area she, Erla? Yeah. Uh, well, there was some back and for forwarding with the dust jacket. I wasn't sure. I just wasn't sure about it. And uh, it turned out that simple really worked well. It didn't need to be lavish or it didn't need to be complex. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Karina says embossed. No, it's actually, I'm told the word is debossed. So embossed is where it's raised and debossed is where it's pressed down. Um, that's what the printers told me anyway. Good stuff. Uh, si is that Silve? Uh, congrats. Very clean. Looks lush. No doubt the presentation reflects the content. Sean has very deep passion and understanding of impact art. Lucky number seven. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, Sean... Uh, was brilliant because I just gave him the brief and I, I actually sent him a PDF uh, draft copy of the book and he read it and he and he got it. He understood it. Uh, blue, blue, blue. Yeah. Uh, Karina wants to know, how do you become a patron? Uh, Karina, that is easy. It, you go to patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash mythical Ireland. I will paste that in as a comment uh, on I think you're on Facebook according to the little logo you're on Facebook it's, it's a, it's a, I apologize I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean for that video to start I just wanted to paste a comment under it um, Declan Cleary is in Chile where it's sunny it's actually sunny in the Boyne Valley today so the funny thing was you know that um, sorry there's the Patreon details in case anybody's looking for them um, it never entered my head until I was actually driving down to the printing uh, plant you know that when i got the phone call this morning uh, from damien from anglo printers and he said you know we'll deliver them tomorrow it never entered my head what date it was and then i said to him can i can i drop down and get one i just meant one book but he gave me a whole box so just in case you don't know what three looks like there's what three looks like <laughs> three look look like um and it was only when i was on my way down i said it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. It's March the 18th. It's St. Sheila's Day. Very important. Uh, very important, given a lot of what's going on at the moment. Um, huge amount of stuff going on um, in terms of, you know, uh, challenging the patriarchy, patriarchal view uh, and bringing the feminine back to the fore. Uh, so it's very interesting that that sh should should coincide with today, and I'm delighted actually. I'm delighted to be able to to talk as often as possible about Saint Sheila's Day, a figure from uh, Irish lore and uh, belief uh, from past times who appears to have vanished from history, uh, but who uh, whose uh, memory is being resuscitated gladly, uh, fabulously. Thanks, Natalia. Uh, I think you're in South America too, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, thank you for that. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm chuffed. I have to say I'm chuffed. 
Um, Michael White uh, would love to illustrate a book on Irish myths. Well, do you know what? I reckon there's plenty of opportunity there because there's so much stuff has been published about mythology. Maybe, maybe that's uh, maybe that's something we could uh, talk about in the future. Um, because I could never illustrate. I can I can take photographs. You all know that, but I couldn't illustrate. I couldn't do drawings or paintings or anything like that. And that's why exactly why I brought Sean in because I, I knew that Sean would be the one to, uh, you know, to make it happen. Perhaps, perhaps, bit, yeah. It's just when you turn it a certain way to the light, you might just see it a little bit brighter. It looks just looks a little bit dull there, face on, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm just imagining it, but. Uh, yeah, lovely sheen off it, and uh, yeah, it's like a royal blue, isn't it? You know, it's it's um, it's it's as I say, different in so many ways, but uh, different, I hope, in so many good ways. I agree, Stacy. Definitely, um, it's a nice coincidence, anyway. Um, so I think I've shared the link uh, as to where you can buy it. There's a short link to it, which is bit.ly forward slash return to Sagish. One word, capital R, capital T, capital S. Uh, let me just make sure that that's working. Yes. So I'll share that. Uh, so you can order your copy if that's what you want to do. Nobody's under any obligation, of course, to order a copy. Uh, the cost of the book, by the way, is €21.99. Euros. Uh, but that's exclusive of postage and packaging, which is uh, included in the price that you pay on the website uh, on uh, mythicalireland.com. Of course, always remember that the shortest way to get to anything is uh, mythicalireland.com. So that's it. Uh, I, uh, I will shortly be returning uh, to work. So I have first thing that will happen over the next couple of days is that all of the people who have pre-ordered signed copies of the book you will get you, your copies will be organized and signed and put in the post uh, but even before that happens most importantly are all of the people who contributed uh a, a, over a certain amount uh to the gofundme campaign to help get return to segish published uh, so uh, first first in the post postage pile will be the gofundme um fundraisers uh, and uh, I'm delighted that uh, the target was reached within a fortnight. It was brilliant. Uh, the second priority will be the pre-orders. And but sure, look, they'll probably all go out together. It's not like you know. Don't worry. It's not like you, you won't get your book for ages. And uh, we do post worldwide. Um, there are uh, some delays relating to COVID with some countries. I know Belgium, for instance. Uh, there was a lady there who who uh, waited a long time to get a book from me, and I think Australia, on and off, Australia has been a little bit difficult. Uh, uh, the states after Christmas was worse. Uh, early December stuff was getting there in six days from Ireland. So uh, anyway, I'll just read to finish. I'll read the uh, what I call the blurb for the book, which is essentially a four paragraph introduction to what it's supposed to be about. And uh, when you read it, I hope that you understand. David Halpin is there as well. So, hey, David, I didn't see you. Uh, and, and brilliant. On your birthday hint list. Yeah, you do that. I wonder when your birthday is. Um, yes, I'll keep mine a secret. Um, uh, when you read it, I hope that you understand what I mean when I say that it's actually very difficult to summarize the book. When you read it, I think you'll understand why it's not easy to when somebody. Uh, that's one of the toughest things to do, actually, when you are uh, writing a proposal for a publisher, especially in relation to fiction, is you have to write a, a one page synopsis. Now, one page typed is probably about what is it? It's probably about three or four hundred words, maybe five hundred. It's not a lot, and you have to try and summarize. Now, this one doesn't follow a plot. This one doesn't have characters. It's not like a novel. <laughs> and again, you'll understand that when you get when you get to it. And uh, 
it was only in the final stages of the design when it was nearly ready to go to print that I was actually finally able to write the foreword for the book, which is a four page introduction to it. Um, because I found it so difficult, you know, I just needed to let go of the thought process actually, and eventually just to allow, uh, allow it to flow. Actually, probably better off reading the foreword and then I'll have to leave it at that because I have to go back to work. This is not a conventional book. It emerged from some unknown wellspring of myth and poetry, something that, like Segish itself, was brimming with energy on the verge of a fluid emergence, a fountain of words. These words were written carefully and lovingly with a pen onto the creamy pages of a beautiful notebook. Before I began, I set clear intentions and proscriptions that the writing would not follow any plan or formula, that the resulting book should not be defined easily as a text of fiction or non-fiction, that I would not count its words and that I would it would be allowed to flow freely onto those creamy pages. What followed was a most extraordinary emanation. Return to Segish is a story of human experience and an exploration of the depths of the human unconscious through mythology, exemplified by the life cycle of the salmon, a singularly remarkable creature which is able to survive in fresh water as well as salt water. Having been spawned in the breeding pools of the upper reaches of the River Boyne, represented in myth by the symbolic well of Segish, the salmon eventually finds its way to the sea and the ocean before ultimately returning to the exact location of its birth, where, in its final act, it spawns the next generation of salmon. Within the wonderfully diverse myths of the River Boyne, including those about the famed salmon of knowledge, the uh, story of the arrival of the Milesian bard Amergin, and the myths of the great monuments of Brunebonia, are powerful metaphors and poetic signposts for the ordinary mortal human who might dare to wish to live an exemplary mythical existence. Joseph Campbell in The Hero with a Thousand Faces wrote that, quote, myth is the secret opening through which the inexhaustible energies of the cosmos pour into human cultural manifestation, unquote. Return to Segish attempts to serve as a means of allowing the invigorating, revivifying and life-affirming waters of the sacred well to pour into the human experience with all its lows and highs, all its struggles and successes, all its tragedies and its triumphs, and to express by mythic and poetic means those experiences of the other world that, in Ireland, is eternally on the cusp of a great overflowing into this world. There is something about myth that is at once familiar and yet wholly ineffable. At times it makes perfect sense, and at others it is entirely impenetrable. Some time ago, perhaps many years ago, I realised the futility of attempting to transcribe or otherwise adapt or decipher in their entirety the images and metaphors of the myths of the Boyne Valley. It was easier, I found, to frame stories and narratives around the symbolism of myth rather than to endeavour to provide some sort of rational or explicit explanation of their complete meaning. The mythology of Ireland is a bit like the megalithic art inscribed upon the curbstones of the great she mounds of uh, the Neolithic. Some of that art seems entirely translatable, but some is opaque and apparently incomprehensible. Many of the tens of thousands of visitors who come to Sheedenbroga, New Grange, every year ask. What is the meaning of the triple spiral emblem carved onto the great curbstone that lies at its entrance? The real question is this. Does the triple spiral have an explicit meaning? Was it ever intended to have a pedago pedagogical instructive function? Or in its flag flagrant abstraction, was it supposed to lead the initiate on labyrinthine journeys into the depths of their own human fallibility and unconscious infinitude. Like the megalithic art, some myths are pliable in the hands of the writer, explainable in rational terms. Others are intransigent, refusing to yield to logical stimulus or interpretation. And so, sometimes all that is left for us to do is to retell the story and allow it to do its own talking.
There are facets of the journey that are much easier to navigate, belonging as they do to the everyday experience of the human being. But there are aspects of this story that are, by necessity, couched in vague and arcane allegory and abstract themes. How can I explain to you that which is unfathomable? I am unable, being just an ordinary human being. Words are inadequate. In this respect, I recall the poet evoking Amergin, the mythical bard whose birth of song is as much a disclosure of the universal desire for illumination as it is a revelation of his own personal gnosis. In his incantation are flashes of poetic brilliance that call us to deeper, hidden aspects of ourselves. The journey of the salmon seems an apt metaphor for the experience of human life. The injunction at Segish, before the smolt leaves the nest, so to speak, is to go forth and find the ocean, and in finding the ocean, to find something of itself that is unattainable except in rare circumstances. A a prolonged meditation upon the wonderfully rich and diverse mythic images presented in the Irish storytelling tradition yields glimpses into that deep, unknown, unknowable depth of human consciousness and unconsciousness. In Return to Segish, I summon Bradon Fassa, the Salmon of Knowledge, and Amergin, and Bowen, and Dagda, and Mananon, and Angus, and Eru, and a host of others from the mythological pantheon to take us to those depths and perhaps beyond. The truth is that there is no vastness greater than the deep and yawning chasm of our own innocence, our own unknowing. But it is surely a great joy to attempt to explore that vast boundlessness of the human spirit. And that is signed Anthony Murphy, Drahada, January 2021. And even that doesn't give you a proper introduction because that is an an effort to uh, explicitly, uh, you know, empirically describe what's within the pages and what's within the pages of the the book. I can't even call it a story. uh, Are poetic wanderings and imaginings and uh, dream images and, and uh, one publisher who did read it and liked it, but uh, d- doesn't publish this kind of material, said to me, it's very dreamlike, you know, it's got a lovely dreamlike quality about it. Anyway, um, I'm overjoyed, delighted, thrilled to have it in my hands at last. Um, number seven, uh, book number eight can't even stand still and just enjoy the moment (laughs) always looking forward no 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 um book number eight is in progress i've been writing it since last year i need to get my act together and get it finished and i'm actually itching believe it or not to start another one so there you go you have to keep going you know um we'll see we'll see how it goes you know Uh, Katie uh, raises an interesting point. Um, Yes, it will. And in fact, when I tried to create a Kindle version, uh, Katie, uh, I regret to say that um, uh, the plugin wouldn't install for me. I I did this before with a previous uh, book, with several previous books. There will be. I'm just not entirely sure how I'm going to do that just yet. I'm going to need, pardon me, I'm going to need help with that. I may have to use someone else's computer. But yes, there will be a Kindle, pardon me, there will be a Kindle version, absolutely. There will also, if I'm able to find the time to do it, there will also be an audio version. Uh, if you're a patron, again, uh, there's an entire chapter. Well, some of the cha- most of the chapters are quite short, in fairness. It's a book of short chapters. It's broken up very, uh, it's punctuated very regularly. So that if you're not the sort of person to sit down and read it in one go, it might take you four or five hours, maybe less, depending on your speed. If you're the sort of person who reads it, you know, a little at a time, it'll suit you down to the ground. The chapters are short. But there's one chapter that I read for patrons, um, uh, and that's available again on patreon.com forward slash mythical Ireland. And it just when I was doing it, I realized that, you know, this this is one book definitely that needs to be available as an audio book more than the others, because there's there's that there is a poetic quality to it that, almost 
calls for. If you understand the metaphors and when you read it, you'll understand uh, about Amergin and the birth of song, which are big themes in it, that you'll understand perhaps it's the sort of thing that needs to be heard as much as it needs to be read and seen by the eyes. It's something that needs to perhaps involve all the senses, you know. So that's it. Um, I uh, All I can say is, you know, um, if you're interested, please order a copy. I have copies for immediate dispatch. Oh, well, when I say immediate, the, I have... I, pr I probably have about 30 copies here, but the rest, all of the rest will be arriving tomorrow. Um, and that's, as I say, when I'll be busy uh, writing envelopes and uh, making visits to the post office. So hopefully those of you who are in Ireland, generally you'll get your copies within a day or two of them being sent. If you're further afield, it might take a few days. It might take a week. It might take a little bit longer. Um, but uh, do your best. Uh, don't forget to spread the word. Uh, authors like me, I'm what you call an indie author from that point of view. All my fiction, all my fiction, all my books that are non non fiction um, have been self published, and I rely on you uh, to uh, spread the word, to review the book uh, when it's on Amazon, when it's listed on Amazon. Please review it, even if you didn't like it, um, and you want to leave a bad review. Then fair enough, but. Uh, it's better. I'd prefer a two-star review than no review at all, uh, to be honest, um, because at least people get a better sense of it then when they read reviews, you know. But some of the best books that have ever been written have, have been trashed by some people. So you'll never win on that front. So that's why I'm saying it's always important to get reviews, whether they're good, bad or indifferent. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are. The sun is shining today. It's 16 degrees Celsius here in the Boyne Valley. It's a beautiful day. I want to wish the very best of St. Sheila's Day to you. I'm going to keep doing, uh, uh, trying to resuscitate her memory as much as I can. Um, last year on this day, we did a, a Live Irish Myths episode all about St. Sheila. So you may be able to catch up on that uh, on YouTube, all the previous episodes. Uh, Kristen is looking for the title again because she, she tuned in late. That's okay. It's called Return to Segish. And there's no subheading, you know. It's not like Return to Segish, colon, the story of blah, blah, blah. It's just plain and simple, Return to Segish. And uh, it, Segish is an Irish name for the well that's supposed to have formed that's supposed to have been the source of the Boyne. It's a mythical well. There is actually a well, a Trinity well, near Carberry in County Kildare, that is said to be the source of the Boyne. They're one and the same, essentially. And uh, just in case you read that and you say, Segais, you know, you, that you might think it's English. That's an Irish name, Segish, is how it's pronounced. Just think of something like S-E-G-G-I-S-H will do it. Segish, you know, Segish, or S-E-G-G-E-S-H, Segish, you know. That's how to pronounce it. But uh, anyway, uh, hopefully, if you do uh, get your hands on it, you will enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I'm i 100% sure you will. If you're interested in Irish mythology or you're interested in poetry or druids or, you know, the Boyne Valley, megaliths, anything like that, the Salmon of Knowledge, Amergin and the Milesians, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Happy St. Sheila's Day, everyone. I'm going back to work. Hope you have a great day. It's long a full. Uh, I won't say Yichawak because it's in the middle of the day and it doesn't feel right. Slongafol, uh, August Tog.